Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Heroes. My name is Matt and today I wanted to build a door latching system so that we can basically lock the door. Like not lock it but shut it so it won't open with the wind or if, if an animal climbed up there and pushed on it it wouldn't just open. I've got an idea in mind for how to do it so I'm going to get stuck into it and take you along for the ride. So essentially what I want to do guys is build um, with dowels yet again um, a latching system. The first thing that I want to do is find a stick that is about the right size so I know how big to make my latches and how big of um, a dowel I need to make to go through the hole to create the latch. Then I'll drill the hole through the side of the frame and fit it all together while it's up there. So first things first, I need to find a stick, measure it up to make sure I've got everything the right size and I think I'm going to start with the dowel as the first piece to work off. So I'm going to go find that now. Found a piece of willow that is an offcut from the um, weaves that we used for the door. It was too thick to use and it's pretty much the same size as the spade bit. So once I've shaved it down with the knife, I'm, I'm pretty confident it'll be solid and it'll be just smaller than the size of the hole that I drill, which will be perfect. So I'm just going to run up to the treehouse now and just make sure I've got enough. I'll probably cut it oversized because I can always trim it down at the end. So the only tools that I brought with me today was my knife on my hip, my bear mace, obviously, for predator protection, and my little uh, silky Supercell folding saw. Uh, super light. That's one thing I do enjoy about the day trips is you don't have to pack all this food and sleeping equipment and all that stuff. So now I've cut my dowel to, my dowel to size, it's time to shave it down and make it all pretty and smooth. I do enjoy carving dowels, I have to say. It's very therapeutic indeed. So I hope you guys have been enjoying the content. I'm super happy to be getting more treehouse videos out to you guys because to be honest, they are the most fun videos to shoot. Um, sometimes they're a lot of work. I think maybe some people don't quite understand how much work it is to come out here and collect all the wood up for stuff and build stuff. It's a lot of work, but I'm glad to be back doing it regularly. It's kind of nice to be getting to a stage where we can do a little bit finer work, like a little bit finer projects. Get a little bit more craftsmansy with uh, what we're doing, rather than just these insane big wood collections and stacking logs up everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep comparing the size of my dowel uh, to the size of the spade bit um, to make sure that it's small enough that it's going to work nicely. A few little knots in this little bit of willow here, but that's okay. Forest is alive with the sound of wildlife right now. Joke. <laughs> All right guys, so I'm, I think I've finished it up pretty well. It's, um, if you can see that, but it's pretty much just a hair smaller than the spade bit. And this spade bit is not the best. So when I drill through the side of the frame, it's not gonna be perfectly that diameter. It'll probably be bigger because it moves up and down like that. So I think this is gonna be good for now. I can always shave it down a bit later. So the principle that I'm gonna use to actually lock the door is this dowel is gonna slot through the, through the door frame. And I'm gonna square off this end and I'm gonna square off this end and then I'm gonna have two other pieces of wood with square holes cut out of them so it can slot over each end. So that way the dowel will pivot in the hole but the actual square joints on the latch will actually stay fixed. So it will actually move as one big like horseshoe latch basically. At least that's what I'm hoping it's gonna do. So next is I'm gonna find two pieces to use for my latches to go on either side. So I really, really want to be working with dry wood for this because drilling holes in wet timber is just a nightmare, especially with that spade bit. So I, I found a nice piece of um, poplar. This has been kept dry under our treehouse. 
since we made the table, the coffee table, originally we were gonna make a slightly different design and this is just an off cut piece. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna cut it so I have flush, a flush end. I'm gonna cut it to the length I want the latch to be so I can get two pieces out of this. And then I'm gonna split it and start carving it down to make my latches. It should be a lot easier because it's drier. <laughs> I'm going to cut it straight in half and then I know I've got enough to work with. I can always cut them down smaller after, so straight down the middle. Okay, so I've got my two pieces. Now to start cutting them down. I think what the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to batten down from the top and start to make like a plank almost out of it. So get battening with the old mallet, I guess. The little mallet or maybe just a stick would be good. I'm not sure it needs to be. Maybe I'll use one piece to mallet the other. See how we get on. Ideally, I want to avoid using the heartwood because it's really soft in poplar and not very stable. Such a dream to be working with dry, drier timber though. Let's try and split this guy right down the middle. Boom. That was easy. Beautiful. Definitely would be easier to clean this guy up with a hatchet though. <laughs> Guess that's all part of bushcraft though, is working with what you got, man. Gotta work with what you got. That's not bad though. Not bad at all. I'm gonna make the other one. two very similar pieces. So now I'm gonna clean these up a little bit, try and get a nice flat edge. You can see it's a little bit twisty McGee. Nice. And this one's pretty much perfect. And pretty good, I think. Pretty good. So now I've got my two pieces and my dowel cut. And you should, start to be able to see what I'm gonna do. I now need to put squares on the end of my dowel and then chisel out some square holes on this so that the whole thing can work like that. A little bit like that, mate. Um, so first off, I need to go and check to see how big the gap needs to be because obviously this is like way too big. So I'm gonna go check that right now. So guys, I've marked off my uh, dowel joint with a couple of saw marks, so I know this is the closest in I want my side bits to be. Um, so knowing that those uh, latches are about an inch thick actually leaves me with around two inches to play with, which is great because it means I could actually even wedge the end of it to keep it super secure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and carve some square points perfectly parallel with each other on the end of this dowel, ready for me to chisel out the holes. Or you know what, maybe I'm gonna chisel out the holes first and then I'll carve the dowel to fit. Cause then if I carve the holes too big with the chisel, I can do this afterwards rather than if I make the holes too big, having to carve a whole new dowel. A 
And I don't want to be wider with the square than this dowel is. So it wants to be actually quite a small square. You don't want to go too far with the chisel, otherwise it's going to risk splitting out of this edge. So as you go, you want to go with the grain and just pull out the excess that you've uh, loosened up and just keep working your way down. So you can see what I'm doing, I'm just cutting the square and just pulling out the excess as I go. Once you get down to a certain point, I've been using the chisel with the flat side facing out, but once you re reach a certain point, it's gonna to wanna to start digging out like that. So then you can reverse the chisel so that the curve on the edge of the chisel forces the chisel back in. So you can keep a nice square joint. Again, much easier to work with dry wood than wet wood. You want to be quite careful when you're digging it out too because you don't want to round off the edge of the square too much. If you were a very fine carpenter, you'd actually mark it on both sides, but seeing as the wood is all crazy, <laughs> I've kind of had to just go straight through and start pulling it out. But now, I've gone all the way through, I can start cleaning it up from the back. So you can see what I'm going for there guys, I've cut a square hole all the way through so that this can slot onto the end of my dowel. So now to cut the other one. So there we go guys, I've got the two square holes cut through my two pieces. So now I'm gonna start working with my dowel to get a nice square end on it so I can slot it on to the end of my piece. Hopefully it should all work, but we'll see what's gonna happen. Let's do it. So next up, using my marks so I know where to take it square to, I'm gonna start shaving these into a square. I'm not sure the best way to do this, so I think I'm going to start off by cutting two small horizontal lines and starting a nice square edge. See how we get on. Make sure that I don't cut too deep with this saw or I'm going to really weaken this dowel. Let's see how we're looking with this. We've still got a little bit to come off there, which is great. I'm glad that I can just shave the dowel down and I don't have to make the holes bigger. Awesome, so we're getting there. So now we're almost at the right size for the end pieces to slot on here. So now I'm gonna taper these a little bit to make it easier to get on and just fine tune this to get it really nice and just perfect. 
So while I'm finishing carving this piece off, I just wanted to give a shout out to another local Canadian YouTube channel um, that I've been enjoying quite recently, and that's uh, BC Bushcraft. Um, he's got a channel, we were around the same subs for a while and then we took off a little bit. Um, he just hit 10,000 subscribers and he does these really nice uh, overnighters in BC, British Columbia. Um, I know he hasn't been able to go out recently to shoot any videos because of the wildfires in BC have been so crazy there's been campfire bans. Um, and going out and not being able to make campfires kind of takes a lot of the fun out of bushcrafting. Um, but yeah, go over and uh, check out BC Bushcraft. Awesome little channel. On the, on the rise, um, if you like what you see, subscribe and tell him that Bushcraft Heroes sent you over. I'll leave a link in the description to his channel um, so you guys can find it easily. It's Dave, Dave at BC Bushcraft. But I love carving, mate. So relaxing being in the woods carving stuff. Man, a chisel is such a handy bit of equipment for this sort of stuff, I tell you. Trying to do it with a knife, it's just not gonna happen. Oh, there we go, look, first piece. Starting to fit into shape. Oh, look at that, beautiful. And look, it doesn't wanna twist. It's got a little bit of twist, but it will actually just wanna be like that, which is awesome. So I got the left side done. Let's see about getting this right side on there. There we go. There we go. Boom. So it's a little bit rickety, but we're gonna fix that in a minute with some wedges and stuff. So you can see in principle how it's gonna work, guys. This dowel is gonna go through the middle of the, the door frame and then the entire thing will pivot up and down like this and the door will be locked in the middle. Don't worry about this one flopping a bit. I'm gonna fix that up nice and tight. So it'll be like a horseshoe latch. So let's see if it fits. Okay guys, so I know now that this fits perfectly where I want it to be and is working pretty much exactly how I want it to work. So the next step is for me to drill the hole inside the frame and once that's drilled I can start fitting it together and then I can think about wedging, putting wedges in the end of this to like tighten it all up together so it all just fits nice and snugly inside and then we can test it out. So I'm going to start drilling the hole. I'm thinking around about here is going to be just about right. So start drilling the hole. So you, can, you can't see, but the end of the spade bit has just started to poke through the hole here. So to keep it nice and not ripping out the back, I'm gonna try and drill back through from the other side. And now that I've managed to drill my hole through from this side a little bit, I can take the rest out from the back without worrying that the front's gonna split out. So, now I've managed to drill the hole all the way through the piece. It's time to check to see if my latch system will actually fit through. So I'm gonna take one side off of my latch, set that aside for in a minute, and then check to see if this fits through and spins freely. And if it doesn't, then I'll have to just shave down the middle a little bit. So I can already feel it's a little bit tight. So I'm just going to shave down the middle of my dowel a little bit so it can spin freely. And I want to be really careful here not to touch the nice square edges that I've made. Now I can just keep putting it through the hole and checking to see how tight it is. Still a little bit tight. 
A little bit of resistance is good, but I don't want to put too much pressure on it so you have to force it because that's going to result in the square joints getting ripped out and ripped apart. There we go. So I'm happy with that. It's spinning pretty freely both ways. So it should be okay. I'm going to put it back together and see how it reacts to that. Note to self, mark the pieces so you know which way to put them back on afterwards. There we go. So you can see how it's going to kind of work. Now this piece of poplar it has really rough bark that's causing friction when I lift it up and down and these aren't going to want to like go up and down nice and smoothly. So I'm just going to now take these edges of the bark off so that there's no friction on, on the whole mechanism. Probably should have draw knifed the frame, but c'est la vie, you live and learn. Let's try that again. There we go. Flowing much more freely now. And that's great. I'm really happy with how that's working. So I know that it should technically, technically, fall down like that. And it's going to be a lot more stable once I put the wedges and stuff in each end to hold it all in tight. But that works pretty well. So next up, I'm going to start packing out those joints, making them nice and tight. So first I've got to cut some wedges and little wedges and stuff to play with. And you know what I'm actually going to do as well, I'm going to take these off and uh, trim these down a bit, these overhanging pegs on each side, and do the same technique we did with the stairs and with um, the door and everything and put some wedges into the end to really lock these pieces in place. So let's carve some wedges. So I'm going to use the off cuts that I used to make the latches to make my wedges just by battening this down. So this is going to make some nice wedges, man. Nice bit of dry timber. I've cut one big long wedge and I've tapered both ends. So this end tapers down this way and this end tapers down this way. And then I can just cut it in the middle and I got two wedges to use. All right guys, so I got a couple of tools for this. I got my saw, I got the little mallet and I got some wedges that I've made. First thing I'm gonna do is saw off the excess off of these pieces and then cut a wedge slot. And I gotta make sure that I cut my wedge slot the right way so the wedge is forcing outwards into the, gr sorry, outwards into the, the length of the grain so it doesn't wanna force and split the wood apart pushing against the end, the end grain. That was a tip from one of our subscribers. So what I am going to do, or attempt to do, I'm going to put a little tiny nick top right corner here. And then I'm going to put a little nick here. So I know that the top right corner lines up with this top right corner and I'll do the same on this side. And then I'll know which way to put these back on once I'm done. and then cut our wedge hole. Now, if I line these up again, so I'm really gonna want my wedge to go, to be pushing this way. So I need to cut my wedge horizontally. I 
haven't got much room to play with, so don't wanna go too far with my wedge cuts. So now I've got my wedge cuts made, I can then realign these pieces. So that goes on like that. That one goes on like that. So before I put the wedges in the top, I'm gonna pack, I wanna pack around the joint where it's a little bit loose before I bang one into the middle. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, I think. Or maybe I'll, actually I'm gonna cut the wedges and put them in, but not tap them in all the way. Then pack around the edge and then hit the wedges in to tighten everything up. So my wedges are actually twice the, the thickness that they need to be. So I'm gonna just split this one, just split this one straight down the middle. I'm gonna leave it like that for now. And then I'm gonna make some more wedges around the edge. And then I'll hit this one in last. So this is looking pretty nice and tight now. I can, I can see and actually see the, the dowel pivoting. It's not got too much movement in it. So I'm gonna start just tapping in these dowels and get that one in the middle right in as far as it wants to go. So now I can cut the whole thing off flush. Beautiful. So you can see now that's all finished off, how it completely locks in place. There's like no twisting in this piece on the dowel and it's pivoting perfectly at like I want it to. And that's exactly what I wanted. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly the same on the inside. And you won't be able to see it, but suffice it to say, I'm gonna do exactly the same as what I did here on the inside. Look at that. Beautiful, much more rigid. That is exactly what we want, mate. Perfect. So let's cut the excess off again. Well, I guess we better test it out. That is awesome. That is solid as a rock, man really surprised one thing I can see becoming an issue later on is once we finish this weave it's gonna be tricky so what we might have to do is shave some of these uh, off to like a 45 degree angle some of these weaves so that it can slot on and off easily but I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be too difficult down to a 45. Actually kind of nice. Eventually I'll have to put a peg, probably a dowel through the um, actual door frame so that the, the latch can just freely rest um, down onto the peg so it doesn't fall all the way back down here. But for now this is working great and uh, definitely a technique that works. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Solid, you'd have to push the whole frame out. I think I probably will cut these down a little shorter as well. But for now it's kind of nice, it's kind of chunky. Chunky door latch. Oh, that looks just awesome. So that's great. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Bushcraft Heroes. Sorry the other boys weren't able to join me. They've been a bit preoccupied, but I wanted to get down and just shoot another video for you. A little quick one on how to build a door latch for your door, or if you ever build a door for your bushcraft shelter or anything like that. Let me know please in the comments what you think of this design and technique or how I might be able to refine it. You guys have so many great ideas and I'm so appreciative of all the feedback that you guys give. So 
Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Also for sneak peeks of upcoming Treehouse additions, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook post pictures and little snippets of things to come so if you want to be the first to see what's coming next on youtube for the bushcraft treehouse make sure to follow us on instagram and on facebook and if you haven't already please subscribe we'll see you next time